building a little strength in your legs and being able to make a good butterfly hook. <laughs> right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the partner. If you're brand new, pick somebody light, like Dalton. You're gonna get an S grip. The S grip is one of my favorite grips in jiu-jitsu. It allows me to use my arms a little bit more than I think a gable grip does. What a gable grip does to me is it allows me to pull in, but my shoulders don't really care for how it feels when I try to pinch. The S grip, on the other hand, allows me to use kind of more of my elbows to pinch, and I feel like I can keep my elbows in a little bit easier than a gable grip, but the grip is going to be either this or this. I remember four fingers over the thumb, I'm just connecting my fingers together and I'm making an S. So I reach underneath my partner, and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to start to rock back Right, and in the beginning, it's okay to rock flat back because we're just learning, right? But realistically, unless I was just trying to enter his legs, and even if I was trying to enter his legs, I'm not really going to be lifting my partner straight up in the air. Butterfly guard to me is always a bit of an angle. So I'm gonna kind of practice building that angle and then lifting my partner up. And he'll start to tilt, but because of the drill, I'm not really focused on trapping his arm and sweeping him over. I'm just focused on turning my butt a little bit, keeping my chin a bit over his shoulder, and lifting, making sure that I have a good hook. Right, so I'm controlling Dalton's leg with my feet. Right, building a little bit of an angle, rocking back, and then Right, and Dalton can use his elbows, if your partner's pretty new too, they can use their hands, right? And we can just practice lifting, scooting, and then building a little bit of an angle, right? And this is gonna translate to your like John Jock sweeps, or your kind of basic any of your wrestling up inside of the butterfly guard. Now, once you guys start to feel like a bit more advanced in this, you can actually have your partner start to post on their legs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rock him to his side, and Dawn, you're just gonna post his leg. We'll start on this leg first, okay, bud? So I start to build an angle, he's gonna post. Exactly, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna practice getting underneath my partner. Again, this is like all like old school Marcelo stuff that my first instructor was just obsessed with. So I reach under his leg, now I can start practicing getting into X squad. And I actually think this is one of the easiest ways to get into X guard. And I think X guard is probably the easiest guard to start to learn trying to be underneath the person. Single leg X is great, but single leg X I feel like requires a bit more of a understanding of how to clamp. Where this is gonna use that same mechanic of hooking our feet to help pull us underneath. And now it's just an extension, right? X guard means extend. So I have to extend my arm. Right now, I'm just using a basic technical stand-up. Then I'm gonna pull the back of his knee. A lot of us are gonna wanna try to keep this knee like a little loose. And people like Dalton, right, are really slick and they're gonna be able to kind of pull their foot out, maybe just, yeah, they're gonna make your life generally kind of a pain in the butt. But if I pull his knee down towards the floor, I control his ability to really do anything other than turn back this way. Right, he can't go this way, so he has to go back this way. Exactly. Now I just make sure that I control his feet, right, and then he can't stand up. All simple things that sometimes we forget about, right? Maybe I sweep my partner, let go of his legs, and before you know it, he's up on his feet. So I have to stay attached to my partner the whole time, right? So I lift, right? I build my angle, I start to lift. Right, once I feel comfortable with this, as I lift, my partner's gonna post on their leg. Yeah, and I'm just gonna pull myself underneath. This leg stays lifting, this hand reaches underneath, and now I'm gonna use my other foot and my wrist. I like to use my wrists a lot in Jiu Jitsu. I don't like to use my hands as much because I feel like I can make a nice little hook. So even if Dawn was super slick at high stepping or he's doing a really good job of trying to defend himself, I can keep my ear close to his foot, I have a nice wrap, and I can start to do 
what I need to do. If I need to post into the armpit, remember this is extension, right? Extend. Now I'm just doing a technical stand up. My foot goes to the floor. I scoot myself back. And I just make sure his knee is pointed to the floor. If his knee is not pointed to the floor, it's going to be easier for him to escape. Maybe I fall right into a triangle, right? If his knee is pointed to the floor, though, it's going to be much, much harder for him to do anything other than just turn to his back. So I can stay on him, yeah, and then I just make sure I control his legs. And then look, you can add everything to start together, then you start to build a chain, and then before you know it, you've added like almost all of these together into like your own little routine to where you start to feel comfortable moving at least in one section of the game. Because as a white belt, it can be really, really hard to understand where you're going, especially if you're learning like technique by technique, meaning like maybe one day we work on mount stuff and then the other day we work on closed guard stuff or just scattering your techniques. Whereas putting your techniques kind of into a map, like one, two, what do I do after this? That is gonna help kind of keep your focus and it'll allow you to, in my opinion, learn a lot faster. I think the reason why you see lower belts learning so much faster than, and I can say this because I started like pretty early, like I think 2005, it, the generational gap is insane. And I think it's just because everything's laid out a lot clearer. You're not learning off of a book or a DVD. You're learning like a systematic approach. And that's a good word for it because everything does need to have a system. So when you're starting out, just make sure that your focus is where you're having the most fun, but also where you feel like you can get the most out of it. So build yourself a nice little chain and before you know it, you're gonna get better a lot faster.